Good morning. morning. It's good to see you, the few of you that are here with us this morning. We welcome all of you that are watching this um, either later on YouTube or right now through Facebook. I appreciate the, the social distancing that you are doing and trying to keep one another safe and not become ill from this. Um, for those of you that are at home, I welcome you to make comments. You can do that at any time while you're watching that, and you might have somebody else you notice is watching too, and you can have a conversation because you're not here in this building with us. You might actually enjoy being where you are, so you can keep your pajamas on and um, talk to your friends while you're watching this. Um, we made the decision not to have in-person worship to keep us all safe. And from now on until the end of the month, we will not hold any in-person meetings here at the church. That includes Elder Bless and Celebrate Recovery, as well as the Methodism class and the meetings that have been scheduled. We may try to think how we can regroup and maybe do this um, from a distance, how we can invite others to uh, watch through Facebook the Methodism class perhaps, or hold some meetings through a video conferencing app if we need to. The one of the things, though, about not being in this space is that you don't have the opportunity to offer your, your tithe or your gifts during our offering time. So I would remind you that you can always mail the church a check. Even though we're not meeting together, there are bills that need to be paid, and so I hope that you will remember that. If you uh, don't want to drop it in the mail, you can actually come to the church and there's a place in our mailbox just outside the sanctuary where you can drop it into the mailbox where Virginia can get that then. I would invite you during this time to replace handshakes with phone calls. Reach out to your friends in other ways so that you can stay connected to other people, whether it's electronically dropping them an email or just picking up the phone and listening to one another. And finally, I would invite you to pray for those who have already been affected by this virus and particularly pray for the medical personnel who are overworked and having to deal with it around the country. And so um, I think that's all the announcements that I need to make this morning. At this time, I'd invite um, you to listen as the prelude is played and we bring in the light. pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Be present in this place and with all those who worship with us today. Might we all know the power of your spirit binding us together in the spirit of your grace and love. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to sing with us, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. i uh -huh. 
during the season of Lent, we are saying a psalm and singing. And so today, uh, I'd invite you to listen and read along Psalm 95. It is um, in the hymnal, if you happen to have a hymnal at home, it's on page 814. And so Kim is going to sing the responses for us. Uh, I don't think any of us feel comfortable singing along with her today. (laughs) You don't want to hear just me singing through the microphone. So um, she's going to sing the response, and then we'll read this together. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great ruler above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth and also the heights of the mountains. The sea belongs to God who made it, and the dry land because God formed it. Harden not your hearts, listen to God's voice. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God. We are the people of God's pasture, the sheep of God's hand. Hear the voice of the Lord today. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people who err in heart, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore I swore in my anger that they should not enter my rest. Harden not your hearts, listen to God's voice. I'd invite uh, the two children that are here with us today to come forward. So even though y'all are in the same family, you're, you're sitting far apart like we've asked everybody to do, to give about three to six feet. Why are we doing that? <laughs> Wait, here, you say. Because I don't want to get sick. And what did you say? Because of the corona and CV-19. Yes. Because of COVID-19, the coronavirus, we, we don't want to get near each other so we don't get sick. But we don't want to make anybody else sick either, do we? Now, do you know that for children that get this virus, it doesn't hurt them very much. It's like getting a cold or something. And you get better pretty quickly. Have you all ever had a cold? Have you ever had a cold, a runny nose, sneezing, coughing? Yeah, you've probably had one of those at some point, but you'll get over this if you get it. But you know what? For people who are older or who have other diseases, This could be a really serious illness. So you know why we're not having worship today? Here in this place, we're having worship, we're just not having a full church, why? Because of the virus, but what do we want to make sure doesn't happen? That any of the old people or anybody else get sick. We really want to try and keep everybody healthy. Do you know What do you do when you love somebody? You take care of them? What do you do? You hug and kiss them. But you know what? When we love somebody right now, what's the best thing to do? Yeah, give them an elbow bump or a wave or or call them on the phone. Don't go play with them. You don't want to go bring it home to somebody else, right? So... The way that we're doing, the reason we're doing this this way is because we love each other and we want to keep each other healthy. And that's all that this is about, is trying to help each other the best we can and show love for others. So let us pray together. 
God, show us the other ways that we can love one another besides hugging and kissing. Show us how we can show your care for one another in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks, you all. The scripture lesson assigned for today comes from John's Gospel, the fourth chapter. Last week we read the third chapter about Nicodemus, and this week we read in the fourth chapter about the Samaritan woman as she meets Jesus, beginning with the fifth verse and reading through the 42nd. It's a very long piece of scripture. So he, meaning Jesus, came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become to them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I, ever, I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city, and they were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. 
For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you have said we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, here is the woman at the well. She was probably the original social distancer, wasn't she? She goes to the well in the middle of the day when others would not be there, so she would be by herself. She's like the shopper that tries to go to Walmart at midnight to avoid all those other shoppers that have been rushing there to get bottled water and toilet paper. But it isn't because of a fear of disease 
that she's going there and avoiding her fellow villagers. In reality, we really don't know why she came at noon. There's lots of assumptions that been, have been made through the years, but the Bible really does not tell us. What we do know is this, that Jesus spoke to a Samaritan woman when all the social rules of that day said that he should not do that. And the conversation which I read, which a very, was a very long passage, that's one of the longest conversations that Jesus has with just one person. Jesus' partner in that conversation, in that very long conversation, is a Samaritan woman. There were three barriers between Jesus and this unnamed woman. They were gender, ethnicity, and religion. All were barriers that should have kept him from speaking to this woman at the well. Both she and the other disciples are shocked that Jesus speaks to her. When he first asks for a drink, she's amazed that this Jewish man would speak to her, a Samaritan woman. When the disciples return after they have found food, they also find it scandalous that Jesus is talking to a woman. And yet he does. He simply asks her for a drink. Jesus is the one that is thirsty, and he asks her for some water. And yet he is the one who has living water which quenches all of our thirst. And he offers this to her. What Jesus speaks with her about, though, is spiritual sustenance, the living water, the water that we can all receive, whether Jewish or Samaritan, man or woman, young or old. The living water is for all. Now, for those of you that have heard this story before, you've studied it in a Bible study or Sunday school, you probably think you know something about this woman. We've made a lot of assumptions about her through the years, but we do not really know her story. We can guess some things from the text, but that is it. They are only guesses. Just like when we look at the outside of someone else's life and think we know what goes on in their home. Here in this passage of scripture, we're told that she comes to the well at noon. All that tells us is that she wasn't there at the time of day when most other women would come to the well. Why? We're not told the answer to that question. But the guess has always been that she is ashamed or unwelcome by the other women of the town because we're making assumptions about her marital situation. For when Jesus tells her to go and call her husband and bring him back, she says that she has no husband, and he responds by saying, You're right, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and now the one you are with is not your husband. We've made assumptions about what that means, that perhaps she was engaged in some sort of sinful behavior. But there's no judgment on Jesus' part. In this passage, we don't see him say something like, your sins are forgiven or go and sin no more. Perhaps she truly was a widow that had to participate in that leveret law that meant that she had to marry the next person and the next person whenever a, a member of the family died. And perhaps she was just living with an extended family member who didn't want to marry her. Whatever the situation, we can only know that it was probably not a pleasant one. She's a Samaritan, a woman in a male-dominated world, and who has been living a challenging and probably tragic life and is very likely dependent on other people. And here this prophet has named her situation. And whether it was filled with sin or not, he has offered her spiritual sustenance. He offers her living water, and how does she respond? She's so excited that she leaves that water jug and goes to the village so she can tell others about Jesus. Whatever had kept her from engaging with the townspeople, that is overcome in this encounter with Jesus. Because of Jesus, she runs to town to tell everyone about him and what he has said to her. Anna Carter Florence has said that the woman left out four words, though, when she ran back to town. What the Bible tells us she said is, come and see a man who has told me everything I ever did. Well, Florence would add these last four words, and he loved me anyway. 
anyway. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did, and he loved me anyway. Jesus knows her situation and still loves and forgives her. The man who told her everything about herself loved her anyway. And it's in that moment that she sees God and receives Christ and runs to tell others. She runs to tell all those folks in the village. But what's interesting to me is when she gets to the village, she doesn't immediately say, come and see Christ, the one who gives living water. Rather, she asks a question. She says, he cannot be the Messiah, can he? That's a question that expects a negative answer. No, no, he's not the Messiah. She's still questioning. And she's still, she's engaging these other people in research. She wants to encourage them to do their own seeking. And they respond to that. They come out and they go to see Jesus and they ask him to stay and remain with them. And we're told that Jesus remains with the people and many come to faith. They too receive the living water that revives and saves them. Jesus offers us that same water, water that gushes up to eternal life and quenches all our thirst. How many of us ran to the store this week looking for water? Just as this woman went to the well, we went looking for water that would help us survive. Jesus offers us water that will help us thrive. Water that quenches our thirst and gushes up to eternal life. Right now in this moment, we may feel very parched, thirsty to be with others, thirsty to be free of this cloud that is hanging over us, thirsty to know that God is with us in this time. We may feel parched, but Jesus offers us living water that gushes up to eternal life. So I invite you now, wherever you are, as long as you're not driving, watching this online, I invite you to close your eyes. And I want to share with you a devotional that I received and have edited a little bit. But I invite you to close your eyes and hear these words as if Jesus were meeting you at the well and speaking to you. Come and receive the living water, for I know what is in your heart. I know your loneliness and all your hurts, the rejections, the judgments, the humiliations, the isolation. I have carried it all before you, and I will carry it all for you. I know especially your need for love, how you are thirsting to be loved and cherished, but how often you have thirsted in vain by seeking love selfishly, striving to fill the emptiness inside you with passing things, with the even greater emptiness of sin. Do you thirst for love? Come to me, all you who thirst. I will satisfy you with the living waters that quench your thirst. You who thirst for the living water, I love you and want to be loved by you. You are precious to me. Come to me and I will give you living water to satisfy your thirst. I will fill your heart and heal your wounds. I will make you a new creation and give you peace, even in all your trials. You who thirst, you must never doubt my mercy, my acceptance of you, my desire to forgive, my longing to bless you and live my life in you. Come to me and I will satisfy your thirst with living waters. If you feel unimportant in the eyes of the world, that matters not at all. For me, there is no one any more important in the entire world than you. Come to me and I will give you living waters. Open to me, come to me, thirst for me, give me your life. You who are thirsty, come to me just as you are. You don't need to change to believe in my love. 
for it will be your belief in my love that will change you. You forget me, and yet I am seeking you every moment of the day, standing at the door of your heart and knocking, ready to give you the living water that gushes up to eternal life. All your life I have been looking for your love. I have never stopped seeking to love you and be loved by you. You have tried many other things in your search for happiness. Why not try opening your heart to me right now, more than you ever have before? Whenever you do open the door of your heart, whenever you come close enough, you will hear me say to you again and again, not in mere human words, but in spirit, no matter what you have done, I love you for your own sake. Come to me with your misery and your sins, with your troubles and needs, with all your longing to be loved. I have the living water that springs up to eternal life. You who are thirsty, come and be satisfied. You who are thirsty, come and have my living water. Let us pray. Gracious God, who offers us this gift of living water and eternal life, you know who we are and everything we have done. You know we thirst for things that will never satisfy us and that we commit ourselves to things that will never last. Forgive us, O Lord, and give us this living water so that we may never thirst again. For you are the source of deepest compassion and the fountain of eternal life. Today we pray for all who are thirsty, thirsty for a life of meaning and for a word of grace. Lord, there are many who are weary from life's long journey, weary from pain or grief, weary with illness and suffering. Lord, we lift these before you now. Today we especially pray for our world, for our country, for our community. We lift before you all those who are ill and in need of healing, not those only who have this coronavirus, but for all who are ill. Might those who are working to heal the sick and those who are working to prevent the illness be strengthened for their work. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, the other healthcare professionals, we pray for scientists and researchers. We pray for the leaders in our country and all those around the world who are dealing with the effects of this virus. And Lord, we pray for patience. We pray that all the precautions we are taking will be effective to the point that we think it's a whole lot of nothing, for then we will know it truly has succeeded. Lord, show us the ways, though, that we can reach out to those who are on their own, who are in need of care, who are in need of our help. Show us how we can be an answer to prayer. Living God, through your Spirit, pour your love into our hearts, your grace into our lives, your healing into our world until the earth is filled with your glory as the waters cover the sea. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you, as, uh, as you can, to sing along. Fill my cup, Lord.
In times of uncertainty, it is always good to remind ourselves of our faith. And so I invite you to say with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Normally, on this Sunday, we would have celebrated communion together, but it did not seem appropriate to do that when we are not gathered together as a body. And yet, I would remind you of what Jesus said during that Last Supper with his disciples. When he gave them wine and bread, two staples that probably were at most meals that they shared together, he said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It was meant to be something that every time they drank wine, they remembered Jesus. And something that I think is important about that, and I'll just tell a little story. When I was in um, seminary and first began studying communion, I had a hard time drinking grape juice after that because that's what we serve here in um, the Methodist Church for communion is grape juice. And so when I would drink that grape juice, it just did not taste right having it with my breakfast at home. And then I finally recognized that that is exactly what Jesus intended. That when we share together in a meal, we are to remember Jesus. And it's not just, oh, I remember for the disciples, oh, I remember that meal we had with Jesus that last time. But it is more to remember that Jesus is with us. So wherever you are today, as you share a meal together, I'd invite you to remember that God, through Jesus, is with you. God's Spirit is with you. As you drink whatever beverage it is you're drinking, whether it's wine or grape juice or just good water, might you remember, just as you fill yourselves with those things, the Spirit might fill you as well and be with you this day and always. And so in um, closing, we're going to sing together nothing but the blood. So if you can sing along wherever you are, I invite you to sing with us nothing but the blood.
wherever you are, might you know the blessing of God. Might you know the living water that Jesus offers, that you might know a spring of life welling up within you, knowing God's presence with you in each and every moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you.